Hello. I was going to uh, do an extensive write-up on how neurons worked, and I realized that I could probably just do a quick video uh, outlining some basic principles. Uh, I should start by saying that I'm not a neurobiologist. Uh, I, did, I didn't study neurology. I've been uh, learning more about it over the last few months while I've been working on this project, but uh, if you're studying for a test, you should talk to the experts. So I'm going to go over a quick model of uh, what a neuron looks like um, you know, under, under a microscope. Um, so this is a typical average neuron. There's many different kinds of neurons. They have all different configurations. So this is just a kind of representative model. Neurons are cells, and as such they have a nucleus. Uh, they have an outer wall that's shown here in blue. It's called the soma. Um, and that soma has a series of um, kind of projections coming out of it called dendrites. And those projections branch off in, in many places, depending on the neuron. Um, you can see there's a close-up of uh, one of the little points, and it branches off more. Um, go online, and maybe, maybe I'll, I'll link uh, some, some good neuron pictures in the description for this video. Uh, important thing to understand here is that uh, the dendrites are inputs. So they are the uh, part of the physical neuron that allow it to receive signals uh, from other neurons or from sensory inputs. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, on the opposite side of the neuron cell, there's a little bump called the axon hillock, and that's where the axon connects. So the axon, um, every neuron might have multiple dendrites that branch all over the place. It's only ever going to have one axon. Um, and the axon can be very long, so this neuron body, you know, pretty pretty small, 50 to 100 micrometers probably, give or give or take, depending on the depending on the neuron. Whereas the length of the axon, you know, can be greater than one meter. In the case of the neuron that extends from your your foot up to your spinal column, and that axon acts as the output. Um, it, it generally, not in all cases, but it can terminate in an axon terminal. That terminal then branches out locally and connects to other neurons downstream. Um, and this connection point called the synapse, which is this junction right here, it's not something I'm going to get into right now. It's where neurotransmitters and receptors and all that happen. Um, and that's a very important part of neurobiology, but it's not one that I'm trying to model here. We're going to assume that this connection just happens. What we are interested in is how the neuron behaves. Um, so it's important to understand that within the neuron there's something called membrane potential. And the membrane potential is just, it's related to the, constant, the ionic concentration uh, inside and outside the soma. There's a differential there that creates a voltage. Um, that voltage potential has a resting state. So there's kind of a resting level of voltage potential that it likes to stay at. Um, now when these dendrites, the inputs, receive signals, that potential will blip up uh, in response to those inputs um, before then decaying back down to its resting level. And of course the, you know, the speed at which that uh, jumps up and the speed at which it decays and the length of time it stays in an excited state and the magnitude of the excitation, you know, all those things uh, depend on the type of neuron, they depend on the type of stimulation, uh, depend on a lot of factors, but that's one of the things we're trying to model. Um, so the neuron might uh, decay back to its ground state, receive another input, um, decay, decay back to its ground state, no big deal. Uh, so what happens if it gets multiple inputs from multiple dendrites at once? Well the uh, membrane potential can then uh, cumulatively increase in value um, until it reaches a threshold value, and we'll just make this red line be the threshold. And once it, uh, once the membrane potential jumps over that value, it becomes what's called an action potential, or creates an action potential, uh, which is kind of a spillover increase in membrane potential that occurs when enough of these dendrites are excited simultaneously. Um, so the membrane potential shoots up and then dives down. It actually dives down below the resting potential level goes through what's called the refractory period before it recovers back to the, uh, the resting level. So what's important to understand is that, you know, during this process, during the action potential, the neuron sends a signal down its axon, through the axon terminals, through the synapse, um, to downstream neurons that it's connected to. And it's this action that allows the neuron to receive signals process them, and then send them downstream to subsequent neurons, and, and how they're connected 
is what creates the neural network and what uh, affects um, essentially what type of um, computational uh, logic the, the neural network follows. And that's how our brains work um, in a very, very, very simplified fashion. Again, there's many different kinds of neurons, many different um, synaptic concepts that I'm not getting into here, but this is the basic idea. This is the basic idea that we're trying to model first uh, in software and then um, later in, uh, in our hardware system. Thank you.